Hiya. Welcome back to Sapio SMP, and we are coming out of this nether portal, which I moved underground onto the swamp. Uh, we are not starting in the city today because I have a few plans uh, for this episode. Um, now, I am alone on the server right now, but uh, Chiu actually has a death count of 9 and has requested a duel. So we'll be doing that in a little bit. But first, uh, I would like to change how this area actually looks. Because right now, um, I kind of messed up. The cave entrance to the nether portal right there is actually in the wrong direction. I would like my uh, whatever base that I end up coming up with to be completely spot, uh, spawn proof. And I don't have to worry about any mobs showing up anywhere. But uh, this whole area is, you know, pretty dangerous. This whole back area too and if mobs spawn there then things could go very very badly so um i did clear all of the hills and i cleared some of the trees over that direction but the idea is that the cave and the portal which is somewhere down here uh is gonna extend this way and it's gonna come out in the middle uh of the swamp here and i'm gonna create an artificial island around here in order to well in order to build my one point 17 base out here in the wilderness uh, not in the wilderness in the swamp so i'm going to actually get working on that right now i try to come up with a good way of going up here and um i will see you on the flip side So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this island happened. I know it's a little weird because I am using a completely different camera than, you know, what I would be seeing on my screen thanks to the powers of replay mod. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And, um, I gotta say, I really like this build. I really like, um, how it turned out. The, the house is really nice, you know? Um, and I guess you won't be able to see me. I come over here unless if I move the camera over this way hello hi um, yeah so as you can see this this house is pretty nice uh, and drone shot boom okay all right um, yeah this house is pretty nice uh, this island was pretty nice you know it took me you know it took me a full month for me to make this island and design the hut and all of that you know in the in the meantime you can hear maybe a difference in how i sound i changed my mic i got a new mic um so yeah it, it took me a, quite a while to make this place you know i i had things going on i, I was busy but you know the real magic actually of this island it, it, it happens uh, inside so uh why don't you just uh, come on in um so inside as you can see uh, Goodness, I forgot. I forgot that I have to open the door for you now. Come on in. All right. Yeah. So uh, in here, you, as you can see, uh, this is um, it's a pretty nice, nice house. Um, not a lot of stuff going on. There's like a polished styrite 
a ceiling. Um, the windows are pretty nice though, you know, you got a nice like 360 view of the place. There are some candles um, that are magically floating in midair. We're not going to talk about that. This guy actually has a chain here which is blocked by this uh, mysterious light source coming from underground. I know, it's kind of weird, right? Um, the, the way you enter, by the way, uh, is, there is a basement, um, and uh, the basement you want to enter uh, down here. So um, I'm going to go and I'm going to allow you to drop as well, okay? Uh, I'll see you down there, Geronimo! Okay, you can drop now. Hello? Uh... Oh, gosh. Okay, alright. Um, there you are. Hi, uh, how, how'd you get down? Never mind. Um, uh, so, so this is actually, uh, why it took a month. <laughs> I was just kidding about that island and the hut. That took, uh, only like a day or two, maybe. But this is, uh, this is, um, just a little place that I found. It's very nice, very spacious. Uh, and this is gonna be where all of my 1.17 farms are gonna go. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done here. Uh, by the way, um, uh, drone shot! As you're seeing the drone shot, you might be able to tell that there are some weird things happening on those two walls, and that's because uh, those are glow lichens, and they actually look pretty good without the shaders on, and uh, this is what it looks like without the shaders. Yep, uh, that is what it looks like without the shaders. It looks really nice, right? Because it gives more texture to the uh, smooth stone, um, and it looks like it's starting to get overgrown, uh, but with the shaders, Uh, unfortunately with the shaders it, it just glows and doesn't look nice so I have to decide on whether or not I want to keep it. I usually play without shaders which is why I'm using the replay mod so you can see everything with shaders without lag but it really doesn't look that nice so I'm gonna have to think about whether or not I want to use my uh, keep my own sanity for just playing or Keep in mind, you YouTube folks that are watching this through the YouTubes. Uh, anyway. Hello, this is Sapio of the Future editing this video, and I just did not like how obnoxiously bright the glow lichen was. So I went into the code of the shader and I fixed it. Uh, as you can see on the screen right now, uh, the glow lichen is no longer glowing, but it is still emitting light. So uh, that's what I did. Um, hopefully the next renders are a little better uh, to see. Some of the things I said were cut out because of it. Uh, but yeah, that's what I did. I changed it. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. I am thinking of adding more detailing in, in this place. For example, uh, instead of having just a moss kind of grow uh, in the wall. I want to give it some kind of a little depth. So uh, come with me. Come with me. Uh, as you can see, there are some like roots of these moss moss blocks um, that that is right here. So I want to like give it a little bit of depth, kind of kind of working its way around like this. Now the tricky part is that makes it difficult to light up. Like this thing right here. This space right here it has a light level of seven believe it or not so uh, that's that's a little annoying but i have an idea on how to fix that up and the idea is to use glowstones now i don't have any glowstones on me for any demonstration purposes uh but it and it's going to take a little bit of time before i uh, gather up enough glowstones for me to do what i want to do um but as you can see, the walls, especially right here, this wall behind me, very dark. I don't like it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in some lighting into each of these walls. And that's going to take quite a lot of time. But I wanted to give you some kind of progress because I haven't uploaded a Minecraft video in about a month. And, um, and I, 
I don't want to. I don't want to do that. You know. Hey, there's some glow lichen growing in the walls over there. And I thought maybe that would add some good texture. And also, I put some blocks of iron up there uh, because, well, that had a more of a portally feel. And before I continue, I should probably explain my idea for this area. I want this to become Aperture Science um, or Aperture Labs, where I'm going to be creating farms and testing out 1.7. I, I should probably like look at the camera here. Hold on, sorry. Where I'll be testing out uh, all 1.17 mechanics and creating 1.17 farms. Like I was very lucky that the in the chunks that I have cleared out, there were two amethyst geos relatively close to each other. I think I'm going to use this one to just collect the amethyst shards with, you know, the piston and the hoppers and it's relatively easy. I'm going to use those for the actual clusters themselves um, because there are a little bit more of them so it'll make for uh, farming them up a little bit easier. And, and yeah, and this place is going to have a drown farm, it's going to have um, a dripstone farm and all that. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. You know, as the drone shot, drone shot will have uh, shown, you know, there is actually a river biome that is running through this swamp biome that makes a really interesting shape on the ground. And I did want to kind of maybe capitalize on that, but I became too lazy and just uh, said, hey, you know what? The grass is showing it pretty well. But the river biome means that it's going to be relatively easy to create a drown farm. Let's see what uh, what else is there. Uh, uh, I think that's really it. I, I need to get started on building these farms actually. And the way I'm going to do them is I'm going to create the farms and I'm going to uh, uh, surround them with smooth stone, just like the uh, area. And that actually means I'm going to have to gather up quite a bit of glowstone and uh, crimson wood so I can match the lighting on the ceiling. I, and I'm also going to do that on the walls as well, so that's going to take a, quite a bit of time. I'm going to have to create a crimson stem farm somehow. I guess I'll have to start working on that as well. There's a lot of work that needs to be done, but this is the general area that I wanted to show you real quick before uh, ending this episode. Actually, um, the episode had just begun, didn't it? Um, I should probably explain to you why I titled it Pearl then. The idea is that, uh... This area is going to be filled with chambers, test chambers, right? Uh, but how is it, why is this moss block missing? Did an enderman grab it? I, uh, I, I am a bit concerned. Okay. Whatever. Here we go. What was I saying? Oh, uh, this place is going to be filled with chess monsters, right? No, that's not what I meant. It, this place is going to be filled with chambers. It's going to be filled with test chambers uh, that are going to be farms uh, for 1.17 blocks. But I do think that maybe um, it will be interesting to go to to go to each farm using ender porters, uh, but not just regular ender porters. Uh, let me let me let's go back to the city and uh, uh, I'll show you. Uh, what I mean, but uh, as we go back to the city, I, I do want you to watch the footage of me um, uh, fighting Chiyu for that death count thing, uh, because that is, um, it made me inspired to do this with pearl, ender pearls, let's just say. Uh, here's the footage.
I hope you like the view of the lighthouse over there. Uh, it is quite nice, I think. Um, anyways, I hope you I hope you enjoyed my epic fail during that battle. I honestly I'm a little salty about it, which is why I want to use Ender Pearls in the at Pearl Tour Labs. But anyways, we have this lovely view of the lighthouse for over here, and this is gonna be like my island where I test some things out for now. Uh, it's definitely not gonna be here permanently, but that's all right. Now the the basic idea is to use soul sand. Uh, the soul sand has a very unique property of allowing things to float. So here's the soul sand, and we're gonna create a little barrier around the soul sand. Too high, actually. I'll show you why in a moment. And let's just say that we want to go here. From over here. Now, this is a pretty easy task, actually. Because all we really need to do is, you know, do this. But... What if all these tubes are pretty much enclosed and we can't really go in here? Uh, and uh, we are in different rooms and we want to go to a different room. Now, this is not going to be as quick as a regular ender porter, a regular ender porter because it's not going to use the mechanic of ender pearl stasis, stasis chambers. What this is going to do is use a little old trick. Hold on, I'm gonna, I need a, I need a half slab. Hold on, I'll be right back. We're not gonna, we're, I'm, I'm gonna put it back, okay? Don't, I mean, I told you to stay over there, why? I'm, I'm gonna put it back, okay? I was too lazy, I was too lazy to look through the chest to, Look for a half slab, okay? I'm, I'm gonna put it, it's right in front of my door. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna see it as I come out. Look, 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 look. I'm gonna, the moment I come out, I'm gonna be like, oh, where's the half slab over here? I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see that this thing is missing. I'm gonna put it back. Don't you worry about that, okay? And even if I don't, even if I don't, this has light level 11. It's fine, it's fine. I don't understand how, why it's so, I'm gonna put it back, okay? Jeez. There we go. Let's put the slab there. And we're gonna actually cover up the soul sand first. And then use our water, like this maybe. Actually, just, just this should be fine, I think. There we go. Not quite to the end, but it should be, it should be enough. It'll be fine. It'll, this'll be fine. Trust me. Just trust me. All right, and now we break the tough under the water. Uh, why did I use tough? Uh, I don't know. Just because I felt like it. Now, uh, here's the thing. If we just put, just try to ender pearl here to that other end, uh, okay. The ender pearl doesn't, you know, do anything quite sub substantial. Uh, uh, this is, these are, these are bad, this is bad, I can't, I don't, I didn't even need this, hold on, hold on, just trust me, okay, I'm gonna dig down a little bit, okay, wow, alright, that's a deeper thing than I expected it to be, I did not realize this was what I was getting myself into, it is okay though, because I'm just gonna block it off. Pretend this is not my problem. Get away from me, zombie. I don't need you. I don't need you. This is not... You're not my problem. You are not my problem. That's fine. This is fine. This is totally fine. Okay, good. That was more stressful than it had to be. Alright, this is going to be the tra traditional ender portal thing. Um, it's too high so far. Let me grab some more water. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start filling in the bottom row of this, uh, of this little water canal. Now what this does is it allows for an ender pearl to go all the way down to the ender porter and then uh, it will come right back up and it'll start sliding down this little canal and it'll stop hopefully right before this area. Now let's test that out. Hopefully my theory will be correct. Well, come on, hopefully it'll be correct. And boop! And it comes up and it floats down Thanks to the soul sand, it doesn't hit the bottom or anything, and it slides down thanks to the water at the top. So let me show this to you again. Oh, I'll, I'll be over here, you know. Oh gosh, I touched it. That's not that's not right. I'll be over here. I'll be talking to you, and you know, it, it, nothing's happening. Don't worry about it. I'll be here for eternity. And uh, psych, I'm over here now. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not super exciting, but with like signs and more water canals I should be able to create some systems where I can throw ender pearls downwards or even sideways And it will carry the ender pearl to my destination properly And you know what? I think that is awesome But that also means that I'm gonna need quite a lot of ender pearls. See you on the flip side. All right, let me, I, I need to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. Okay, we're good. We are good. So this means a couple of things. It means that we don't, we're going to need to create an ender grinder. But you know what? We're not going to worry about it this episode. For this episode, I'm going to show you um, some updates to the city, some updates to the places around us around the city and uh and hopefully uh it'll be it'll still be entertaining oh and also that apartment over there that's going to be coming in yeah we're going to build that this episode as well all right uh first of all the bee farm um this is going to be a little awkward i need you to tra teleport in there uh so that i i can use the airlock system of the bees so you know i've did Hello? Can you- <sighs> Goodness. Will you allow me to finish speaking before you teleport places? Jeez. Alright. Now this is my very high-tech airlock system. Now this bee is trying to go down there and um, that's a little awkward because this is where my bee farm actually is. Can you- can you move, man? Sorry. Sorry, I need you to- I know- I know it's fun. I know it's fun spinning around. I know it's fun. I know it's fun, but you need to move. You need to move. There you go. Let's go. Hello. Um, so this is my bee farm. It has bee nests in there, and there's some redstone happening uh, back there, but we don't have to really talk about that. And it's been bringing me a lot of good- Stuff. Honey, honeycombs. We meet, that means candles for days. But that also means I'm gonna have to collect some strings and all that. But it'll be fine. We have spider farm. And also, I you know I I really like this design. It, I mean, it looks cold with all the stone and all that. But you know these fence gates allow me to close them, which means I can turn this farm off, and then I can replace all of these surrounding materials and they'll look fantastic i'm not gonna do that just today for now stone is fine you know stone is fine i like the i like the ground i like the sound it makes anyways uh other thing oh uh this will be very much easier if you just like teleport there you know, um, it's a little awkward, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to work some video editing magic and and, and teleport there as well. So, ready, go. 
And we're here in the village trading hall. As you can see, there's a few more stuff here. Um, there's like the... Uh, these are Fletchers. One of them has the potion of arrow of weakness which can we can use instead of potion of weakness to you know cure zombie villagers uh we have cartographers over here i like this design it looks really nice the puff and the dark oak wood actually works very well with each other and these guys are just our like tools manager so this guy has all the diamond tools um, this guy has our, our diamond sword that we can use. This guy has diamond armor. So we are set for diamond stuff. It is fine. We're, I mean, we can buy these practically for nothing. For nothing, I tell you. But I think the bigger uh, surprise for you might be, uh, might be behind you. You might wanna, you might wanna look, look behind you. Yeah, this monolith just kind of, uh, just, just kind of popped out and popped out of nowhere. It just, uh, it just happened, and um, you know, the the island came out of nowhere. You know, it, it's like it's like Space Odyssey 2001, and you know, it's giving me a quite a bit of iron, which I really like. Me for scale, I guess. Uh, on top are some lightning rods so that the villagers are protected but actually this whole thing is encased inside iron and glass so i'm i'm sure the villagers are gonna be safe the whole time they're just gonna be panicking for the rest of their lives it's fine this has been bringing me in uh, quite a bit of iron right now there's more than a chest full of blocks of iron which is nice. The redstone's back here. It's relatively simple. There's a etho hopper clock to control when the zombies go up. There's an item filter to filter out the poppy, but I don't want it to all go to waste, right? So I decided that, hey, you know, it'll be nice if I can have a double chest of poppy in case I need like red dye. So I made it so that there is a double chest of poppy, which will only start uh, taking away poppy when the chest is completely full, in which case it goes to a an auto dropper. Uh, and this was actually not terrible to fit into this quite large space. Hello kitty, how are you? Um, you might not be able to see, but there's a cat here. I don't know if this impacts the raid, and I don't know if I need to kill this cat. I don't want to kill this cat. Okay, I do not want to kill this cat. I will leave it be. So yeah, this is a little project that I worked on. It has, you know, 12 villager per pod, per floor, uh, three villagers per pod. I decided to use Fletcher's tables because they can't be interacted with, but they're still workstations. And this is a uh, a modification of Tango Tech's custom iron farm in season seven of hermitcraft so um i just you know paused the videos and kind of like looked at the dimensions and i modified it a little bit so that it's symmetrical compared to tango tech uh who didn't make it symmetrical it works like a charm it works like a charm it's nice so that's our iron farm and we're getting iron for days we are set for life in terms of iron we're set for life in terms of villager trading uh so all we really need to start working on now is the ender grinder and of course the apartment now about the apartment um well it's a little awkward but you know the days are short and this this episode is long and i mean it's long already i can't really can't really do anything about that so um you know it, it, it's a little awkward for me to say this but uh maybe maybe i'll have to do it in the next episode i i just i mean i <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i know um you you must have been looking forward to finally a new episode and maybe the apartment is gonna be shown in this episode but i i mean i just i just I just can't bring it to... M I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I just no, uh, don't don't turn don't turn around don't 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 uh, we don't need to we don't need to turn around. Yeah, it's done. Okay, so, <laughs> I was just joking with you. I'm, I've, I've gone ahead and completed the whole thing. You know, I, I kind of wanted to do like a little bit of time lapse for it, but uh, I, I figured, you know, the episode is getting a little long, uh, and I just went ahead and finished it. And I did get a little, you know, overzealous with uh, what I could do, and I created this beautiful drone shot, uh, beautiful basalt. Um, cliffside uh, to accompany this nice apartment. I think, I'm sure, we'll have a good view once we're inside, uh, but uh, you don't really have to go inside. We don't, we, we don't need to, we don't, uh, don't, don't, no, 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 we, we don't need to do this. We don't need to, uh, we don't need to look inside. Don't, don't phase through. Yeah, it's empty. I know you're disappointed. It's hollow. It's a hollow apartment, but uh, I, I'll, I'll fill in the interior at some point in between episodes, I guess. So yeah, uh, this I really like the design of. First of all, I, I tried to do a little bit of a gradient thing, um, so that the lowest floor was the darkest and I guess a little bit lighter in terms of the uh, color palette as it goes up. Uh, only in terms of the darker blocks, of course. And I really liked um adding some very interesting depth into this build i was very much inspired by uh b-dub's perfect realty uh building in hermitcraft season seven as for the roof that's uh that was a lot of copper blocks that i used but it, uh, surprisingly not that much that that was only like three stacks of copper blocks i if i remember correctly uh so that was nice and the basalt uh i created this very cramped uh, basalt generator. You can kind of take a look inside here. Um, there's a there's a bunch of uh, basalt generator thingy in here with a lot of minecarts below. Um, so it's a little bit noisy when it when I'm close to it. Hold on, let me. There you go. You hear that? Yeah. That's a that's a lot of Minecraft uh, minecart hoppers um, stuck inside soul soil in there. Yeah, but I do like the basalt cliffs. I think it will extend over that way, it, which will be easier s seen in a drone shot. Um, and it it's gonna loop around, I think, and it'll slowly transition into another type of cliff. That I'm thinking for the area around here, uh, but that you will have to wait and see. I also cleared out this large mountain that was once here. You can see that it is a lot more flat around here. Um, it's 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 actually not going to be flat for long, I don't think, uh, because there's going to be a big mountain coming in here. That's why I've been flattening that area. And if you if you would follow me with the drone. Ooh, let's take a flight. There we go. Here's a beacon that I set up to clear this mountain. This whole area is going to be under a large mountain. Um, the mountain is going to be shaped uh, kind of with the land as it is right now. Uh, as you can see, there's there's a lot of like lakes and stuff like that. Uh, but there's a lot of mountainous terrain that's around here. Like this little area in here. This is, I think I'm going to leave it pretty much as it is, like a steeper side of the mountain. And I think that's going to be really cool to just have a mount, a large mountain uh, smack dab in the middle of our, um, of our city. Uh, of course, the city is going to continue to extend um, that way west and here is a uh, Chiyu's building that he created recently. I love this tiling on the floor. I love the use of sea lanterns. I love the use of dripstone. Although uh, to be honest there's there's green and then there's brown. So this is a little bit not 
on brand in terms of the city, but you know what? I can accept it. It is a huge, <laughs> somewhat brutalist um, stone monolith of a building here. So I think, I think we'll we'll let this one slide. It's fine. This area that I'm standing in right here is going to be a little store area, a promenade thing. It's going to be a nice little building. I designed it. It looks really nice. Um, I'm as proud of it as I am with that uh, apartment. So yeah, uh, we um, we did a lot today, I think, right? Uh, we created that 1.17 island where we're going to be filling it with 1.17 farms, drowned farms, and, uh, and the whatnots. Created this apartment right here. I showed you the iron farm monolith that is in the villager area. There's just a lot that has happened. Um, on the server and I think you know what I've, I've done a new kind of thing for this episode I don't know if you'll like it or not let me know down in the in the comments below because I, I kind of enjoy this idea of updates through a third third person camera I think it's interesting it's a unique take on Minecraft Let's Plays because of how it's not the perspective you usually see when you're playing the game for yourself. Uh, so I, I kind of enjoy making this. I kind of enjoy thinking about where the camera would be. Um, for example, I am literally talking into thin air here, uh, but it's fine. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed doing this uh, episode, but it, you know, it, it took a, a little, <laughs> a lot more time than just recording. So if you if you liked it, you know. Um, let me know. I think I think that will help motivate me greatly for the next episode. I have some cool ideas for that one as well. But that that was really it. Thank, thanks for watching, and uh, I I guess uh, I guess I'll see you in the next episode probably. I mean, there's really only one way to really end the episode, right? It's to uh, to fall. I am on the ledge. It it makes sense. Okay, bye-bye.